starting out with straight facts I don't lie in my raps, Hunter Biden smoke The Democrats know that, Biden ain't with Jack The name is Barack, he a little B like the pack The earth might be flat Yo, war man of mystery. World War Hero like Street Fighter 2? Exactly. You've gone from <laughs> Brazil to Japan to face E Honda. Was there anyone in Germany? I don't know. Mm, Street Fighter 2? Nah, not really. Tell us about your adventure across the world here as my microphone messes up. Um, how was your time in Japan? Did you sort of just realize they won't let you stay? How did that go? Um, tell us what you've been up to traveling the world, protecting us from DEI and games. No, nah, not really, man. Um, Japan is, uh, I think that if I wanted to stay in Japan, I could, you know, it's not really that difficult. Um, uh, once you get there, you know, I, I, I went there as a student. If I wanted to stay there for good, I probably would be able to. Problem is, you know, uh, I I wanted to. I mean, in order to do this, I would have to pretty much uh, stop doing what I've been doing you know, over the internet. You know, I would have to stop uh, putting out videos. You know, I would have to stop with my website because of time. You know, I would have to find a job over there and get the working visa. And I made a decision to keep going with the content creation route. And I decided to come to Germany to uh, to live with my girlfriend. And that's that's it, you know, because um, here I have more uh, have more free time, you know, to work as a content creator and I can stay with her here. That's why. So you're in Germany now. Whoops. Um, and you're going to keep going with the website. I'm excited because this is something that I don't think anybody has anybody thought of, obviously, until you did it. And now I think there's so much potential here for you to be the source of where people go for this type of information. And this is becoming like an increasing thing for, for me personally. When I think about, you know, products I'm buying or, or movies, I'm going to see anything like that anymore because we have to because things are insane. I want to know who's making it. So you can literally just type in a game to deidetected.com and search for that. And I think people will increasingly do that, especially now, John, and I'll throw to you that we are seeing so many games crumble due to their DEI. And John, I want to get your take on, let's go with like the latest one. And that, do you think you should go with Assassin's Creed or do you want to go with, um, what ju- what's the stuff that just came out today? Outlaws. Yeah. Yeah. So Star Wars Outlaws, I think, is the most recent one to be absolutely destroyed. I mean, uh, and as Cabrutus knows, as you know, uh, it has been a laundry list of games that have embraced this ideology and gamers are not buying them. They are uh, just simply not playing them. They are not interested in this stuff. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, obviously, I think, started it off at the beginning of this year. You had uh, Concord up there. That's probably the biggest one. But Star Wars Outlaws is there as well. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft reported today, and then we'll get b- better numbers in October, but they reported today that they slashed their expected bookings for their second quarter from 500 million euros to between 350 and 370 million euros. That is a decline of 30%. And the majority of that, from what they are telling us, is from soft sales with Star Wars Outlaws, as well as uh, bad sales for uh, X Defiant, which is their um, live action game as a service, or uh, not live action, yeah, uh, games as a service, live service, excuse me. Uh, Games as a service uh, game shooter that they have uh, that had strong numbers initially, but all the rumors were saying that uh, their player base evaporated very quickly and uh, people are no longer purchasing um, in-game items for that. So uh, this is what happens when you do this stuff. Um, And uh, Ubisoft is paying paying the price. I mean, 30% decline in revenue after release in the quarter that they were releasing Star Wars Outlaws, expecting this to be a major win. It turned into a major loser. Yeah. And we are seeing this again and again. And Star Wars 
has been predicted months in advance and that seems like it keeps happening and i want to you know transition that no pun intended to dragon age which i wrote about today i'm a few days late on it um almost a week i think at this point but i i made sure to get more stuff out there as it came in and they are releasing all their creative uh character stuff out months in advance i think it comes out october 31st so over a month in advance and just like star wars all this stuff came out months in advance of the game coming out and Cabrutus, I want to ask you, why are these companies like promoting like their DEI, the top surgery in Dragon Age? They might as well change the name to Dragon Age Transgender Origins or something like that. Why are they promoting all this stuff so far in advance, seeing how it's affecting other games and their sales, do you think? I think I think that I mean in the Dragon Age case, it, I think it's a it's a project delay, you know, something like this. This was probably that they, they were you no know, planning and doing for like, I would say in the past four years, you know, even more than that, could be even more than that. And maybe they didn't predict how bad the situation, the gaming landscape would be for them, you know, <laughs> and the timing, you know, would be for them. And I remember like two or three years ago when I, I looked about the newest Dragon Age game on Twitter, on X, and I saw a fat guy with <laughs> blue hair, and he was a writer, and I was like, oh, okay, bro, this game's going gonna, gonna to stink, you know. <laughs> and here we are. It's even worse than I imagined, bro. I think that Dragon Age is the, the next Dragon Age game feel right, right? Something like this. I think it's going to be the first game ever where you can add you no know, top surgery scares and this, the scars and this kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's getting... <laughs> it's getting it's getting crazy man it's getting even even worse you know it's a new step i i think at this point when you put your game out this far in advance the, a lot of these companies are are sort of trying to brag about how progressive they are and until people start getting fired i don't think it's going to change we can jump over to concord john which i had originally written that they lost around 100 million dollars because that was how much they traditionally spent on games of this you know caliber if you will and then your website reported on a rumor from a podcast where it's upwards of 400 million dollars so 400 million dollars let's just say or even 100 to 400 over i think it was eight years for that game and they put out this stuff way in advance with footage of you know you've got your morbidly obese trans people you've got your robots with pronouns and they're probably thinking i would have to imagine they're thinking this is great everybody's going to see how progressive it is and then it just completely tanks do you think that they're proud of this stuff and and they want to put in people's faces do they think it's normal and they don't even think twice about it why do you think this stuff always gets outed months in advance I think a lot of, I mean, a lot of times these people are true believers. They 100% believe in this ideology and they want to normalize it and they want to use video games to do that. They see that video games are the biggest entertainment industry out there, dwarfing movies and television, especially when you look at uh, the grosses that the video game industry brings in. And uh, that's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to indoctrinate people through these video games uh, into their ideology. I think Kirsch had a really good video the other day talking about this. this is something I've been harping on as well for uh, a, a long time now, but uh, they, they, you hear a lot of times in interviews, they admit this stuff where, where we just have the sweet baby guy. Uh, I forget what is it? Cameron wild, where he's admitting that they want to destroy the video games. But in that video, he's also saying like, we're trying to pass on the values that we believe in through the stories that we're telling. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. Except the only, the problem with that is the things that they see as values, they aren't values at all. It's evil stuff that they're trying uh, to promote, which we see here with uh, the transgender character with Concord, with you see with the top surgery <laughs> scars in Dragon Age, uh, the Veil Guard. I mean, this is what they are trying to do. They are trying to normalize this disordered and degenerate uh, lifestyles and they're doing it through these video games because they see that as the biggest um, entertainment medium out there i remember this goes sort of stuff goes back to i think 2017 when uh google had the one of their big meetings with their um i forget the indian guy that was in charge of it at the time yeah. and they basically had this this theory that they wanted to push forward was to make the search results what they want the world to be. So when you f search female CEO into a, a Google image search, even if it's 90% male CEOs and 10% f 
female CEOs that are the correct number, the correct uh, proportion, we're going to make it even because that's what we want to see in the world. And that's a very, you know, DEI worldview. Let's make everything look like how we want it to be for whatever reason and hope that gets warped into reality. Now, with these... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Thomas Sowell talks about that in Conflict of Visions. That's exactly what he says that they are doing, and that's what they are doing. You're absolutely 100% right. I actually wrote an article in The Federalist about this, talking about uh, how they were trying to push the gay agenda in the comic books back in like 2015, where they were admitting that that is exactly what they want to do. These people openly talk about that's what they want to do, uh, and that is what they want to do. So, yeah, I agree with you. Now, Dustborn is another one of these games where, I mean, this was government funding, and I'll play this in a second because it's hilarious. Gabrutus, have you seen this, the Dustborn stuff? I've seen way more than I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> so they got, I believe it was $1.6 or $1.5 million equivalent from the Danish government. Norwegian. Or Norwegian, excuse me. Then they got yeah, the more Norwegian money from the too. EU. And then they came, and theirs was four years, I think they worked on this game. And they came up with, what were you going to say? I think it was eight years too, because they said that they were inspired by the 2016 uh, uh, political campaign in the United States. I I think that the game got some delays because they, I I mean, my my perception is that they had the idea to start developing this game uh, right when all the pandemic started. So mm. I think that no, that's probably why it took that long to to I mean to get launched. That's my perception. And we're allowed to talk about this because I'm French. Uh, John Trent's probably like English or something, and Cabrutus Italian. Italian, and then Cabrutus is Brazilian. So that's basically like he was born in the jungle. So that's oh, <laughs> pretty much we've covered everything. Yeah. Now, I think this game would have been great if this was a joke. Like, if it taught you some sort of lesson where, like, this stuff is ridiculous or this <laughs> is not what you're supposed to do and not how you're supposed to act, and you could just sort of, like, mold your character to be, like, the super weird person, I think that would have been a great game. But to spend all this money on this um, comic book style art, and, like, it's not... Um, I'm not knocking the art style. It's just, like, they spent all this money... On, on doing nothing, and I want to ask you guys in a second after this, where all this, all this money go? The fella you're with, uh, the black kid, dresses like a writer, does he know anything? You are racist. The fella you're with. I love that, you just call them <laughs> racist, and then there's the, you know, the triggering, sowing discord, and uh, what else was there, bullying people, and again, this would be a perfect parody of like far leftism, but that's not at all what they did. And they just go about this like it's absolutely normal. So, uh, Cabrutus, what do you think these people do with all the money? I mean, we talk about um, Suicide Squad Justice League was like another 120 million or whatever. Uh, C- Concord, all these different things. Do they just hire their friends, do you think? Do they, you know, like, I I, I'm, I struggle to come up with ideas because, like, um, with this game, with Dustborn, it's not some sort of innovative art style and insane CGI that cost them like tens of millions of dollars. Why does it cost them this much money to put out such a shitty game? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I kind of have my own theory, you know. It, it, it may not be. I don't think I am the only one who thinks like this. But here, what here here is what I think. I think yeah, uh, they. I think that no, they they invite their friends that they know are going to approve and know anything you know uh, related to their ideologies and you know the the kind of stuff that they want to do with the game because it's like Trent mentioned uh, uh, a little bit earlier. They just want to use this kind of entertainment as a vehicle to propagate their personal beliefs, you know, and since their money is not coming out of their pockets, you know, no to 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 make this project the project happen i think that they don't care i think that they know since the very beginning that these projects won't sell well you know and uh, except for concord I, I think that concord is a different stuff but talking about uh dustborn i think that they 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 the the owner of the studio he he always knew this game wouldn't you know um be a success you know uh, in terms of sales and but they they don't care because it's 
it's a new tool to propagate their beliefs, you know, their personal agendas, their political agendas. And since the money doesn't come out of their pockets, you know, in case in this Barnes case, you know, uh, they, they got plenty of funding, you know, from governments, uh, European government, European Union. So they don't care, no, they just, you know, even if it doesn't sell well, the game will be there, you know, to keep propagating what they believe. That's that's what I think. And also they can you know, employ their friends. Yeah, that's a lot of what I think is happening too. Uh, John, you want to touch on that? I was just going to say that I think that what happens is, and when we saw this, the original Sweet Baby Ink story, right? They're all intertwined having worked with different companies and then they go and hire. I mean, it's just like um, intelligence agencies and the companies that they end up working for. They'll hire former CIA guys, former British intelligence guys to work on these these companies. And they all sort of push the same ideas. Is that what you're going to uh, basically say? I was actually going to say that Kim Belair actually has admitted that she wanted to basically take over the video game industry with people that she sees as her ideological allies. She said that in an interview with Inclusion FX, that that is exactly what she wanted to do. So I think that uh, what Cabrutus is saying is absolutely 100% right, because that's what they've told us that they're trying to do, that they do and how they do it. And I wanted to ask Cabrutus, while you're in Japan, did you get a chance to talk to people about Assassin's Creed? Because for those who don't know, Assassin's Creed, and correct me if I'm wrong anywhere, uh, they hired a bunch of historians. They used the guy who wrote the book basically based off of Wikipedia. Um, they got everything wrong. He almost edited everything. Wikipedia. Yeah, okay. And then, uh, you know, just give us a little bit about what you know about that from the Japanese perspective, because even just researching it, the information is so vague and so sparse. sparse. There's like three documents about... Um, the guy who's not a samurai that they always call a samurai. What was the Japanese perspective on that from uh, gamers there or even regular people? Um, okay, so uh, first things first. <laughs> About this Wikipedia, if I'm not mistaken, the guy was, you know, when, when he was using the Wikipedia uh, articles, in the Wikipedia articles, in the part of references, you know, he used his own books as reference to reference those Wikipedia articles. So um, the, I just wanted to say this because I, I, a friend of mine told me about this before and and I just remember this. So yeah, and about the Japanese people perception. I have a video when I, I mean, I, I during my time in Japan, I made a Japanese friend, I befriended a Japanese guy uh, through my YouTube channel and he was very nice to me. And we used to hang out in Akihabara, you know, from time to time. And we decided to make a video together, like interviewing Japanese people about that, that, the upcoming Assassin's Creed game. I think this was like three months ago, maybe four months ago. If you go to my YouTube channel, you, you can see it. Now, in that video, not a single Japanese person uh, seen, you know, like offended by the game. They, they even said that, hey, it looks cool, yada, 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 this kind of stuff. But none of them knew Yasuke. And many people told me that I would never be able to get their very honest opinions on in the streets. No, yeah, that's that's the video. I will never be able to get their very honest opinions, you know, about this, about the, the oh, my belly is so sexy, about the, you know, about... <laughs> About, yeah, that that's that, you know you know this this was because they they none of them wanted to show their faces. I mean, so I had to I had to you know to put the camera down like this, you know, and they they were very afraid of offending me because for some reason they thought that I was someone involved with the game's development. So so, so they didn't want to um, to offend me by saying what they really think about you know, the depiction of the Japanese culture and all in that trailer. Now, I still wanted to post a video anyway, so, I mean, so just to showcase, hey, I tried to get their opinions and hear what they said. And to be very honest with you, man, like very honest, I think that Japanese people doesn't even know about Assassin's Creed. It's not it's not it's not really popular over there you know they, they, they don't really care that's that's the perception i had you know well i mean that's good in a sense but it just goes to show you that things can be overblown here and when we focus on it that it becomes like something bigger and i think maybe they're not 
you know, they're not attacked with DEI as much as we are. No, no, they don't. They have no idea, bro. They have, and that's good. And that's <laughs> that awesome. Good, yeah. That's awesome. I'd also wager that if you did that in like any major American city, like the man on the street stuff, most Americans probably would not know mm -hmm. what Assassin's Creed is either. <laughs> Just because it is like a, it is still like a niche video game, right? I mean, obviously it's a major franchise, but it is still just, it is a niche video game. Did yes. you guys get a chance to play Space Marine 2? Because that is one that is, you know, people I expected. That's why I reviewed it was because I was wanting to see if they put in, you know, all the stuff that they had changed in their lore. Have you guys played it? I, I have, I have played almost a hundred hours of it already. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, if, if you give me a video game with a big guy, with a big gun, in power armor, shooting at demons or aliens, bro, that's that's my game. That's my kind of stuff, you know? And I was already a big fan of Warhammer for a K. I, I mean, I, I've been following Warhammer for a K, I mean, since 2010, if I'm not mistaken. And I'll tell you, man, this game, in my opinion, is the best game of this year so far. It has zero, absolute zero DI bullshit in it. In fact, if you go to my X profile, I, I mean, the very same moment I finished the game, I, I, I live streamed the entire thing, you know, in my YouTube channel. But at, after the very moment I finished the game, I posted that Space Marine 2 is a 360, you know, Xbox 360 era game, video game launched in 2024, and it is beautiful. Uh, it's a game that, no, um, doesn't give, you know, a shit about being, you know, like DI stuff or politically correct stuff no it's a very manly video game bro it's exactly like the old school gears of war stuff you know and fortunately there is not like like you are showing right now there is not uh any female custodians in the video game now i don't know about the future if they're gonna add it in the future upcoming dlcs i don't think they will i don't think they will but right now i would say it's wonderful video game go get it go get it go buy it guys Go play it. <laughs> I've played about six hours of it. I'm waiting for my friend to come over and play it with me because I think yeah. it's up to three people at a time. John, are you looking forward to anything? Is there anything on your radar of possibly, and I'll get you to answer this too, Cabrutus, anything on your radar that we're watching to fail or watching to be good? Uh, well, I think the uh, the Ghost of y uh, Yotai that was just announced, that will be interesting to track that, see how that does, given the fact that uh, they introduced a new... Uh, protagonist they changed the time period and the, the new protagonist is a female and there already seems to be a number of red flags regarding that game on who's working on it and who they cast to be the uh, the voice actress for the character so we'll be following that um on that front uh, as far as uh i think what is a maybe a longer story to watch is a uh, square enix to see what they do obviously <clears throat> they removed or a uh, sweet baby inc removed square enix from their client list on their website earlier this week and then we also have Square Enix announcing that they are trying to get back to a focus on fun and entertainment and creating quality experiences over quantity. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see uh, what they do, especially after kind of what we saw with Final Fantasy, what was it, uh, 14, I think, is the MMO, uh, with the Wuklamot stuff, and then obviously Forspoken Falling, and then obviously they're being boycotted with uh, Dragon Quest Three. Uh, HD 2D remake and the the gender options, the censorship with the characters, um, and then obviously changing the name of the town Isis to Ibis and uh, things like that. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens there with Square Enix and what they do moving forward. And I'm really interested to see what they do with the Final Fantasy franchise. Uh, there's rumors that they have a Final Fantasy IX remake in the works as well as uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, that's probably something that I would be really interested in is the Final Fantasy Tactics um, remake. That might be what I'm interested in, or if it's a sequel or just another Final Fantasy Tactics game in general, because they haven't really made a standalone one since the Game Boy Advance, I want to say. Yeah, that's a really long I know they've game. done a couple other Tactics-style games, but not um, Final Fantasy. So there's Valve, there's Warner Brothers, there's Ubisoft. I mean, it writes itself. Uh, 2K, I don't know why they would need that. I mean, there's it, they're making basketball games for the most part. Um, uh, 2K is actually um, uh, Rockstar as well. Uh, that's good. That's a good sign. Um, but it is troubling how many people work with this and feel the need to find a diversity, 
what's the word? Like consultant because they're afraid. And uh, yeah, Cabrutus, is there anything you're keeping your eye on right now that you think is just going to, you know, has the possibility to surpass Dragon Age in terms of what it is? I'm trying to be not to, I'll just call it gayness. <laughs> in terms of wokeness? Yeah. You know yeah. Uh, this year's is still, I don't know. I don't oh, that, think that so. new live shooter that Sony has that they're working on. The, <laughs> what is it? The new, uh, fair games, fair games. Have you seen that? No, mm, don't think so. It's the yeah. like anti capitalist. Uh, ah, I th- yeah, now that you, yeah, I think, yeah, now that you mentioned it, I think I've seen this. Uh, no. yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen, yeah, I've seen this. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, uh, you know, what Fresh I modern take on a heist game in a nutshell. This is a thrilling competitive heist game where you join an underground movement to rob the ultra rich and <laughs> rebalance the scales. You can tell by the language, eh? I've always been passionate about creating new IPs that offer a sense of mystery and a window into different subcultures of society. In many ways, I feel my own experience and collective experience or entire team creating new IP and working on captivating multiplayer games has led us here. Fair game will get fair games will give you the opportunity to break the rules as a modern day Robin Hood, a thrill seeker, just someone who wants to collect cool loot. Trespass inside forbidden locations, fill your pockets like a kid in a candy store, taking unravel the plans of Yeah, so it's a communist dream it sounds what's like. Stu- what's the studio behind this? What's the studio? It's Haven Studios. It's a PlayStation subsidiary. Oh, French guys so- you know these French guys. You can't trust them. I don't think. Hey, I mean, so, yeah. So so it's coming from PlayStation Publishing itself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. they learn their lesson with Concord and the Last of Us Two? And Jesus Christ, man! Why? <laughs> yeah, the Concord. You know, uh, shut down after two weeks, and they're just like, let's just do it again. Less and you can tell by the weeks, actually ten let's... days, bro. There you go. Yeah. Let, let's just do it again. Let's just trust these these tiny studios, which will no longer be tiny after a gigantic injection. That's the problem, too, is they'll make enough money to make three or four more games before they close on their own. Um, but uh, you can tell in the wording, you know, the collective, the, the Robin Hood, we can read between the lines. Why do they... I feel like I asked the same question over and over again. Why do they think we can't tell? But obviously they they know that we can tell and they just don't care. How much longer do we have to go for this? Do you guys think, or is it just always going to be there? These types I, I, of games. I think again. I think that this is a project that was probably you know being developed for some time, and then you know by the time it arrives, is like the worst time possible for them. Um, <laughs> I think that's the same situation, you know, because. Dude, I mean, there, there's, there must be someone over there that is seeing what's happening. Hey, we're going to lose money if we do this. And I, I just don't want to believe that they, 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 I mean, it's Sony, right? Sony is not tied to any, um, let's say, social cause or anything. They just want money. They are a big ass corporation. And I think that they've, the moment they realize that this kind of stuff, you know, start making them you know, bleed money like Spider-Man did. Spider-Man 2, where Spider-Man 2 was a flop, and they know that, right? So I, I really think... you, you million me... less units, I think. Yeah, right? Time. Yeah, Two so... Time. So, I mean, you may you may call me, a, I don't know, a fool or something like this, but <laughs> I really think that Sony will not, will not keep doing stuff like this, you know. Uh, I think that all of these are, you know, uh, delayed projects, you know, projects that were in development uh, way before but the time time will tell if i'm if i'm right or not no time will tell i just don't believe in it have people started reaching out to you yet to get you to review their games to give it like the check mark that it's not dei themed yeah um yeah, the first one was flintlock siege of dawn right <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work out well. No, 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 Flintlock, Flintlock, actually, you know, one of the developers, you know, reached out to me to try to prove that, hey, we had consultancy with Sweetway Bing, but we scrapped everything they did. That they, they, they were actually trying to prove that it was not uh, involved with Sweetway Bing at all in the end. And I asked for a proof, you know, and they refused to show. So, okay, okay I'm going to stay in the list. And you know what? I'm glad it did, bro, because that game, uh, you know, 
And yeah, some developers know have been reached out to me, have been reaching out to me. And yeah, I am in talks with some of them, but I make it very clear, hey, I will only, you know, showcase a game if it's um I mean to recommend a game, you know, in my list if it's a DI free game. You know, there is no way I would put a, a game that I, I am not sure if it's DI free, you know, um in the list as a recommended one. But yeah, some developers I have, uh, have been talking to me. What's the Steam channel or Steam community up to now? Mm, almost 440. Oh my god, the power. Yeah, four, actually, actually, yeah. Dude, if, if you keep up the, this pace, I would say that it's crazy, but I, I think that in less than one year and a half, it may become the biggest thing created in the world. Yeah, I was going to say, how, what other huge Steam communities? I don't, I've never been on a Steam community other than this one. So, uh, and I use Steam all the time, but I just don't go on like anything else on it. How, like, what other communities are there that are bigger than this? The, I think that I think this is right now is the fourth the fourth biggest one, um, and the biggest one is the PC gamer, you know the, mm. the, the magazine PC gamer, and they have something like I don't know maybe six hundred thousand seven hundred thousand, yeah. so it's still kind of far from them, but four point no, two million. It's not, it's not a. No, 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 no. It's it's not a Steam group. It's a Steam curator page. Oh, okay. It's different. It's different from a Steam group, no. So you you the Steam curator pages. There are only three of them that are biggest than in the CBB. I don't even uh, list anything. It's I gotta sign in for that, I guess. No, you you don't have to. It's just Steam. If if you put. If you if you if you type like what about this uh, one? Most followed. No, that's just one <laughs> called most followed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't I can't I can't send you a link if you want. Yeah. Um I can put it in over top or we can talk about it now if you if yeah, just send me a link on uh on Twitter there. I can't imagine that there's going obviously there's not going to be a bigger one but you know i can imagine like this is going to be a thing where big studios are just like we need to get this guy's approval or obviously it'll become a, a website thing we need their approval and then you know we're going to start seeing a big push i could see people if you recommend a game that pushing them probably a couple hundred thousand units cuz like i mean the only reason i would buy one of these big triple a titles or quad a titles anymore if i knew for sure that it wasn't going to be littered with stuff and especially at the prices i mean what was in uh space rain 2 the lowest tier was higher than any <laughs> almost any other game and they're going from you know canadian dollars is, is even more expensive but i think here is like 93 dollars was the lowest one to 150 dollars and then i don't know uh what else all right Steam curators. Yeah, I sent you. Look, look if you can I see can. if you can. Um, so seven seventeen. Yeah. And they're the biggest but, one. But but here's the thing, bro. They 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 haven't been growing like in months. No. Okay, so yeah, you are the fourth biggest. Yeah, I would say I, I think That's I am. Amazing. I, 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 PC yeah. Master Race? That's funny. Even I know that. Um, Just PC games. And 440. And there's 717. Wow, nobody's broken the 1 million mark. Uh, no wonder Steam didn't do anything to you. Not that you broke any rules, but they must have seen the writing on the wall. This page is growing faster than anybody else's. You might be the first one to break a million. And then I want a plaque for you. I want, you know, a cash reward. <laughs> Because what you're doing is is, is, a, is a big deal, I think, and not enough people are appreciating it. But uh, you gotten any invites to any studios or anything like that? Do they want to work with you directly on, you know, a narrative or anything? Or are we just, you know, they want your approval right now? Is that what we're looking at? There is one studio specifically I want to tell, I mean, who they are because, no, it's we didn't 
reach any kind of agreement. Uh, they want me to, they want to kind of make a video series talking about the AI gaming and showcasing me and I'll use this as a marketing um, push for their next upcoming mm -hmm. game. It's not a big studio, you know, it's indie developer. And that's it. No, I don't think there were any anyone else no, that wanted to do this kind of stuff. I gotta be honest, man. It's so much stuff going on that I can barely, you know. I mean, I'm just I'm a single man operation. You know? I'm just one man, and I have my I have my guy, uh, my webmaster developer that he develops the the website for me. But that's it, bro. It's just me and him. So I'm sorry if I am forgetting something right now. But yeah, as far as I remember, there was just only one. But I never, you know, to this date, I never did any kind of any any game you see me promoting and this kind of stuff, bro. I never did anything like in a commercial transaction, commercial transaction. No, I did. I never did any kind of sponsor stuff. I may, I may do in the future, but right now, nah. Uh, everything I did was purely for you know um, the sake of. Um, Increasing, you no, know, the, the the list and and informing people, um, the gamers about this. And Ubisoft I have to fly you out games. to Disneyland. Sorry, <laughs> Ubisoft didn't fly you out to Disneyland. <laughs> no, no. And hey, there is a Sweet Baby Ink game that nobody, nobody, nobody knows about it yet. It's an nice. upcoming game. I have found the link with them <laughs> between then the Sweet Baby Ink, and I think I'm gonna be making a video talking about it um, this week. Well, shoot me that link. I will definitely cover your video for sure. Sure. John, what do you think is the, is the next move here? I mean, um, I think about how the movie industry has gone and how TV shows have gone away from major studios. Now there's new major studios, right? Like Amazon and Netflix are the new major studios. And I saw Manor Lords guy go from nobody to, I think... Like my estimate, my calculation was like he made thirty million dollars overnight uh, for in pre-sales um, for the the early release. Do you think we're going into this direction where we don't need these giant companies anymore? And and even when we see Batman and um, Suicide Squad failing, their audiences, Stars. Star Wars. Um, do we even need these big IPs anymore? Or is this just are we in the golden era? Is it going to get any better? Are we going to shift towards small studios become gigantic? What do you think? Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing. I mean, the video game industry is suffering the same problems that we have been seeing in the movie and the television industry. They're just having this kind of come up until a little bit later where they have these massive, massive budgets that we're seeing. Concord being the biggest example of that, if Colin Moriarty's report is correct and they spent $400 million just on the development for that game. And uh, that's just unsustainable because you're just not going to get the returns for that. And instead, you're going to see something like Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 where they're going to have those budgets a lot smaller. They're going to be able to deliver a high-quality game that's going to be entertaining to uh, the people that they're trying to sell the game to. And they're going to get rewarded for that. And they're going to be able to grow off of uh, that success. So I think you're probably going to see uh, a lot of that happening uh, obviously, some uh, middle-level uh, developers. Obviously, I think another example was Arrowhead with Helldivers 2 had great success. Uh, I think they flushed a lot of that down the drain with what they've done to that game and how they've behaved and the people that they've hired, etc. But I do think that that was an example of kind of delivering something uh, for the gamers and um, uh, doing it on a, on a budget scale. I think that is definitely a model to follow. I think another model uh, to follow is what we're seeing kind of with... Um, Hoyoverse, I'm not exactly sure how they get their funding, but obviously uh, they use a gotcha model and they make a ton of revenue every month on uh, their gotcha games like Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, and the newest one, Zenless Zone Zero. And then obviously, the, I think the first game was like Honkai 3D or something like that. So uh, I definitely think that is a model that you'll start seeing um, games pursue. And I still think that there's the MMO model. I think the tried and true pay... Uh, X amount for uh, a month. I think that model is still sustainable. It can still work, especially if you're delivering something uh, regularly. Um, so I, I, I think that's what you'll see. I do think that there will be a lot, and we're already seeing this, right? Cost cutting from these major um, studios like Microsoft, like Sony. Uh, we just saw Bungie go through significant cuts uh, over there. 
And so I think that is what you're going to continue to see happening because they just really can't sustain the losses that they're taking from these games. Ubisoft was already talking about that today as well in their um, conference call and then in their uh, press release that they released that they're going to have to be more efficient. And what does that mean? That means letting people off downsizing because they just really can't afford um, what they're doing now at the scale that they're doing for the returns that they're getting. Someone being killed in the background, I think. <laughs> That was my daughter. Uh, if there's anything else, um, it was. I love catching up with you guys with this sort of stuff. We get Cabrutus, who hasn't slept in weeks, I think. Uh, yeah. How many languages are you speaking now? We've got Portuguese, Japanese, English. How much German are you learning? Dude, I <laughs> I just arrived in Germany. I barely. I just know how to say "danke" you know, and "guten Morgen" and know this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I speak English, Portuguese, Japanese. I've learned a little bit. No, I can have like very basic conversation, but I have very basic level conversations um, with Japanese people. But Germany, German, uh, yeah, it's a whole new level. I, I, it's I basically English. English, I think. It's almost. Mostly, mostly. Yeah, it has, it has lots of you know, similarities with English and also with... Um, yeah, with English. Yeah, never mind. Yes. With Did you English. go to any of those claw machine places in Japan? Oh, yes, yes. I, yeah, like I told you, I went to Akihabara. Yes, claw machine. And I tried a bunch of them. Couldn't get that Kirby <laughs> unfortunately, dude. I tried, bro. I spent like a thousand yens trying to get it, but nah. Should have made a video about <laughs> it. I would have watched it. Okay, John F. Trent, that parkplace.com, Cabrutus, didetected.com, me, this YouTube channel, and the bla and blaze news com. The blaze.com, uh, whatever website I write on, you'll see it. <laughs> Wherever I work, who knows? Um, we'll cut that part out. Uh, thanks again, guys. We'll do this again soon. And Cabrutus, uh, we appreciate you, everything you're doing. Make sure that you don't stop what you're doing, okay? I want, bro. Starting out with straight facts. Uh -huh. I don't lie in my raps. Uh -huh. Hunter Biden smoke. Uh -huh. The Democrats know that. Uh -huh. Biden ain't win jack. Uh -huh. The name is Barack. Uh -huh. He a little B like the pack. Uh -huh.